next. CBS Sports presents an NCAA championship. I remember the cold and I remember the disappointment at the end that uh, neither team was really able to celebrate uh, and that there was really no clear-cut champion. It ended in a tie, and we kind of left the field with a bittersweet feeling. No one really knew how to react. And I think that game was not completely gratifying in the sense that we couldn't say that we were the sole champions. Two seasons ago, in the 20-degree frigid cold of Rutgers, New Jersey, Santa Clara and Virginia battled in the national championship game. Though each team scored a goal, regulation and the subsequent overtimes ended in a 1-1 tie. And the NCAA declared the two schools co-champions. The co-championship is a bittersweet type of taste that is left in your mouth and uh, you know we can settle it today. Welcome to CBS Sports continuing coverage of the NCAA championships. Today, from the University of South Florida at Tampa, the men's Division I soccer championship. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Joy. Over four weeks, 28 teams on the championship ladder have played down to two. Santa Clara will face Virginia for the title. Joining me, Seamus Mallon, who's been to two of these championship weekends as coach, and most of the last ten as soccer analyst. Bit of irony here. These same two schools faced off in 1989 in the title game on the frozen tundra of Rutgers at New Jersey on a day not fit for soccer. They played to an overtime tie and were declared co-champions. Will today's game in part settle some unfinished business? Well, yes, it is indeed a, re a reunion of sorts. Uh, we've traded in the tundra for the tropics, <laughs> and uh, there have been some rule changes now, so there will be overtime culminating in sudden death if necessary, so we definitely will have a champion today. Santa Clara coach Mitch Murray and says, in fact, that this is the ultimate overtime game. Two-year game, if you will. To reach the final round, Santa Clara defeated Stanford in overtime, got past Fresno State, ended UCLA's 48-game home unbeaten streak, and here Friday, bested Indiana. And to do well today, they've got to get good games out of the Rast brothers. These are twins who play at the back. Very unusual situation in soccer. Cam Rast, the leader of the team, injured his ankle in the semifinal, and his mobility may be restricted. He looked for some help to brother Matt. The defender loves to go forward, is the second leading scorer in this team. He scored eight goals, four of them were game winners. Now, Virginia came into the tournament the number one seed and received a first round bye. Took them two overtimes to get past Hartford. They defeated Yale and here Friday. In a very scrappy game, beat the number two seed, St. Louis. And they did it thanks to the work of Ben Crawley, whose coach felt he didn't play all that great a game, but he scored the tying goal with two minutes left in regulation, then hit the winner in a sudden death overtime period. He'll look for help out of midfield from Claudio Reyna, their highly touted freshman player, great vision, great skill, but does he have the maturity for this occasion? Santa Clara versus Virginia and the opening kickoff when we return. CBS Sports presentation of the NCAA Championships is sponsored by Coca-Cola Classic. Sharing the Olympic ideal is a proud sponsor. You can't beat the real thing. Alka-Seltzer plus cold medicine. Tough medicine for tough winter colds. And by Charles Schwab. Helping investors help themselves. When people gather for the Olympic Winter Games, the simple pleasure of Coca-Cola products is always welcome. And now it could win you a million dollars. Inside specially marked packages of Sprite, Coca-Cola Classic, and Diet Coke with 100% NutraSweet, you'll find a medals and millions game piece. To win, match the complete number any night on CBS coverage of the Olympic Games. 16 nights and 16 $1 million prizes. 
Let the games begin. Today, Tectred Shoe Corporation announced a major retail expansion in 25 U.S. cities. When I see a company that looks like a good investment, I check it out myself. We make it easier to follow your own lead. At Charles Schwab, I can get quotes, financial news, and when I make a trade, commission savings. Always there to give you just the help you need. Help yourself at Schwab today. The morning belongs to Speed Stick. It's what more men reach for to prepare, to prevent, to protect. Speed Stick, 110% protection. Bennett, no better way to face the day. Bennett, no better way to face the day. Speed Stick, 110% protection. day in Tampa, Santa Clara and Virginia get set to face off for the men's Division I soccer championship. A sun-drenched t-shirted crowd here in Tampa and here are the starting lineups. For Santa Clara, Peter Cochran and Trevor Kelly start out as forwards. In the midfield, Grant Schick and Brandon Schmidt playing along with Bruce Broughton and Patrick Griffin. The defenders for Santa Clara, Craig Hampton and Eric Hyatt with the Rast Twins, Cameron and Matt. And in goal for Santa Clara, Kevin Rueda. The Santa Clara coach, first year as head coach, Mitch Murray. For the Virginia Cavaliers. Up front, that scoring duo, Ben Crawley and A.J. Wood. In the midfield, Brad Agus, the freshman Claudio Reyna. Teamed with Richie Williams and senior Lyle Yorks. The defenders, Brian Bates and Michael Hewiler, along with Eric Immler and Clint P.A. And in goal, Jeff Causey, the sophomore for the Cavaliers, their head coach, Bruce Serena, 200-plus college victories. And the officials are led by referee Larry Donovan. Like some basic rules here, the game played in two 45-minute halves. The clock stops only when there's a serious injury. Fouls can result in direct or indirect hits. Indirect meaning the ball must play off a second player before it can go in the goal and count. A serious foul. The referee issues a yellow card. Two yellows or one red automatic ejection from the game. Santa Clara will kick off, and Trevor Kelly wastes no time sending the ball deep. Brad Agus lets it roll out of bounds. And it'll be interesting to watch the styles of play here today. Virginia, a much more controlled kind of pace of the game, slowing it down, moving it from side to side. Santa Clara will tend more to swarm around the ball, try to win the ball early, and counterattack fast. Eric Immler brings it across to the near side, and Clint P.A. Back to Brian Bates. And now Virginia begins to move upfield. Bates with Hugh Weiler on his left, looking ahead. That's it. Broken up by Santa Clara and out of bounds. And there you saw the swarming Santa Clara defense. They sent five players over against two to try to win that ball, and uh, they did win it. They weren't able to counterattack fast, but that is exactly what we'll see more of today. Bates sends it back to Causey, the keeper. He looks ahead, rolls it to Imler. And Causey, when he picked that ball up, looked immediately to his left, meaning he wants to play the ball away from the traffic from which it just came to break that kind of defensive strategy of Santa Clara. And that goes out of bounds. Interesting, in soccer, when is the ball inbounds and out of bounds? The entire ball must be over the entire line in order for it to be out of play, otherwise you can keep playing. And here comes Santa Clara. Sending it long. Over the head of Matt Rask. Two on two, over goal. Well, this is what we talked about at the top, Mike. Matt Rasta breaking out from the back uh, after the swarming defense of uh, Santa Clara had won the ball. Uh, you see then they all swarm in there, they win the ball, and then the long, quick counterattack. That's what they're so good at doing that. And they know that Matt Rast, Matt Rast is going to get wide out there. He does a very good job with the run. He does a good job pulling the ball down. His cross is just uh, not really very accurate. You see it coming way over the top. No threat at the end. So he's got to be disappointed with that because he did everything else exactly correctly. Uh, yeah, 
Bates back to PA. Let's see if Reyna can, can move the ball up. Yeah, Reyna will come back to, to get the ball and try to serve it forward. And that was not a, not a great pass, but it gave them possession for a little bit. But he, he will roam all over the place to get free and ask for the ball to be played to him because he's got, a good, he's got good technique getting the ball forward. So he will come back uh, and help out. And uh, Santa Clara will probably just let him go. And here is Santa Clara on a breakaway. Trevor Kelly coming down the right side, looking to cross, and Clint P.A. takes the ball away. P.A. brings it back up field. And here's Claudio Reyna. Santa Clara right back, and they just flood right around the ball. And here's Broughton with a great chance, and he's wide. Well, Broughton is not one of the leading scorers by any means for Santa Clara. He scored only twice this season, but he's got to be unhappy with that effort because he was played into a beautiful position, had a great opportunity to shoot, took it a little bit wide, but didn't finish it. Here you see on the replay, his first touch now, he pushes it a little bit to his right rather than inside, so he widens the angle a bit and then the miss hits it from the outside of his right foot. Bates for Virginia. Wow, York's coming over. Can't control it. Santa Clara keeps it inbound. Sends it up for Cochran. Cochran rides Reyna off the ball. And it goes to Griffin. Beautiful. Griffin moving up. Waits. Rejected by Virginia. Well, Matt Rast went up again. Cam stayed home. There you see Cam in your picture. And Cam stays home because of that very reason. If they lose possession and there could be a long ball out, then he's got to be back there as the last defender before the keeper to close it down, which is what he did. This game, the last of six NCAA soccer titles to be decided. Men's and women's champions settled to date. More on that North Carolina soccer dynasty coming up at halftime. Our congratulations to all this year's champions. Virginia struggling for control here. Sends it all the way back to Causey. <laughs> not happy with the result there. Well, he's not happy with the fact that the players on the left he wanted to feed were not open. And once again, trying to switch the ball from right to left is part of their tactics for this game. Here's Richie Williams bringing the ball up for Virginia to Claudio Reyna. The freshman who came to college so highly touted, he was already a finalist for player of the year before the season started. And shows you why. Well, he is indeed a highly talented player, and he's the leader in midfield. He'll go back and look for the ball, and here he runs into a position where the Santa Clara defense, as they use it, can really shut him down. Look at all those players over there. Two pushing him towards the sideline and one in front of him, but he's a talented player and skillful enough to get out of those situations as he works a 1-2 with Crawley. Now look at Crawley's defender giving him all that space. The reason he's doing that is because he sees the 1-2 coming up and he wants to give himself enough space to react to the return pass and try to shut down the talented Reyna when he makes his run. That was Cameron Rass, the defender who closed it down. Corner kick, Virginia. Trying to settle the ball. Reyna misfires. The ball goes well up into the air, and Yorks heads it out of bounds. Well, Virginia got all the way downfield, but that Santa Clara defense just swarmed around them. They do close down the shooting angles of goal as well as uh, trying to win possession early. P.A. comes up, and Hewiler has it midfield. With Clint P.A. on the right. Nice pass down the right side. Appeals for a handball there, and it did indeed hit the player's hand, but the referee decided that it was played against his hand. He didn't reach out to, to try to stop it. That will come all the way back. Virginia just does not seem to be able to get, get their offense really to gel. Well, they they're, not, they're having a hard time, but they're now starting to move midfielders around. For instance, Williams has gone forward, and there's a good ball being left through to Yorks. Lyle Yorks. Centers and headed toward goal, and a save for Rueda. Yeah, A.J. Wood getting in there, a good header. He had to reach back for a little bit. Uh, but that whole attack was very good from beginning to end, and here's the end. 
The cross coming in by Orr's got a little bit of swerve on it. He has to come back for it. He's mm. he has to take a step back, which means he's got to then turn and in the air, flick his head the other way. It's very difficult to get much force on the header and an easy save for Rueda. Cochran to Aria. Now a long pass down the right side for Broughton. And Virginia coming right back. A.J. Wood coming right up the middle. He has Crawley on his left. There's the pass for Crawley. Centered and headed away. Uh oh, Crawley again. He rode off one defender, but couldn't handle both. Cochran to Aria, who leaves it for Cam Rast. Here comes Cam Rast trying to break away. And well, Eric Emmer, the sweeper for Virginia, made a very weak tackle there, but his defense came to the rescue and uh, put away that effort by, by Matt Rast. Brian Bates, the sophomore from Woodbridge, Virginia, coming up through, and he runs headlong into Grant Schick, who goes down. Well, a very good surging run out of midfield by Bates as he whacked into Schick. Schick actually uh, obstructed him there. Let's take another look at this. Bates uh, accelerates very nicely past two players, looks up and sees that he can play a quick give and go. There's the give, there's the go, but Schick clearly obstructs him and uh, knocks him over outside the penalty area, so that'll be a free kick for Virginia. It's an indirect kick, so the player who puts the ball in play cannot put it directly into the goal. Now, there'll probably be a short touch here, I would guess, to Reyna, who's so skillful at bending the ball around the wall. Rainey gets it up over the defenders, but Rueda uses every bit of his six foot four to keep that ball out of goal. Well, an excellent shot by Reyna, but very good positioning by the goalkeeper who's on the correct side of the wall and is able to be in the right position to just touch it over. He's not going to try to catch that ball, just knock it safely away. Corner kick, Virginia, and Rueda pulls it out of the sky. And not a very good corner kick, too close to the goal, not much swerve on it, and much too high in the air. And all the advantage in that situation is to the goalkeeper with his height and the ability to use his hands. So Rueda will punt the ball back toward midfield. Santa Clara lets it roll out, and Alberto Cruz has come into the game for Santa Clara. Inbounds going all the way down. Chris Stiles, and it's back to Causey. Very easy chance there for Causey to pull in. Nobody challenging him in front, uh, as all the Santa Clara forwards uh, were still out in midfield. Jeff Causey, who battled freshman Tom Henske for the starting keeper's job through half the season. Booms one long, A.J. Wood heads it toward goal, and Rueda is right there. Well, A.J. Wood using his natural talent there, his height, his strength, to get into a position for a good header attempt on goal. And that's an important uh, tactical weapon of Virginia. They like to go down the sides and cross them into the air high. Uh, two critical goals in the semifinal victory came on just that kind of play. Wood and Causey at six foot two, except for the keepers, are the tallest men on the field. Santa Clara trying to clear the ball. At midfield, Matt Raz coming up, strips it away from Virginia. Long pass down the left sideline. Rast racing for it, has Aria on his right. There's the cross. Shot rejected by Causey. And Griffin swings and misses. Oh my goodness, what a great chance for Griffin. But let's go back here and watch Rast. A good run. Now this is a difficult shot by Arias to pivot, gets the shot off, well blocked by Causey. And what a super chance from just 10 yards out. And Griffin could not capitalize on a great scoring opportunity for Santa Clara. So this first half will end scoreless. And this tremendous college soccer rivalry that has festered for two years is no closer to being settled. After the first half, it is Santa Clara nothing, Virginia nothing. Alka-Seltzer Plus goes to the Arctic Circle, where the toughest colds live. The cold is miserable in this environment. Uh, Alka-Seltzer Plus takes care of the aches, the runny nose. It does the job. Alka-Seltzer Plus fights tough winter colds with a combination of ingredients you can't get anywhere else. Alka-Seltzer Plus has done exactly what I've needed it to do. If I don't go to work, the kids go hungry. Alka-Seltzer Plus, tough medicine for tough winter colds. For nighttime relief without alcohol, try Alka-Seltzer Plus nighttime. Brought just the essentials, huh? What? I, I think they'll have shampoo there. Might not have head and shoulders. 
Well, this is going to be gone a week. Right, a week. Let's say it's the end of the week. We're rested, a little sunburned. Then this stunning brunette sits down beside us. And that's the day your flakes show up. How do you know when they'll show up? You never know. You know? Head and shoulders, and new head and shoulders two-in-one, with complete conditioners built in. It was the night after a game. I wanted to celebrate. So I went out and had some beers. <laughs> no big deal. I felt okay. I was driving slow. It was a breath test I had a problem with. <laughs> Cops took me in. I lost my license. I'm off the team. Everybody's all over me. <sighs> I wish I'd thought of this before. Thousands of youngsters across the country have learned sports skills and life skills from top college coaches and college student-athletes. Funded and organized by the National Collegiate Athletic Association and its corporate partners, Youth Education Through Sports, or YES Clinics, are offered free of charge at the sites of selected NCAA championships. Watch for a YES Clinic in your area. Welcome back to CBS Sports, continuing coverage of the NCAA Championships. Today, the men's Division I soccer title match, and we are scoreless at the half between Santa Clara and Virginia. In Division I women's soccer, North Carolina has won their 10th championship in 11 years, an incredible achievement for this soccer dynasty. Along with the women, the man responsible for those championships, head coach Anson Dorrance. But Dorrance is not limited. His achievements and accolades to college competition. Seamus Mellon talked to Anson, a man who does not rest on his laurels. So, you're checking its speed. Now, if the person is screaming at you, you use their momentum to beat them, right? So you cut it against the grain of their momentum. And if you're touching it away from pressure on your first touch, make it a dynamic self-pass. Where you touch it, you accelerate onto it, keep running with it so the defender can't set up and key on it. Does that make any sense? Okay, here we go. Hi, Dean, here we go. A lot of well-deserved attention is being paid to Anson Dorrance these days. As head coach of North Carolina's Division I women's soccer team, Dorrance led the Tar Heels to an unprecedented 10th national championship. The most recent victory didn't come easily, though. The team was less experienced than usual, so the win over Wisconsin was particularly sweet. I'm excited we won, uh, but to be honest, uh, our legacy isn't just, uh, you know, who's coaching the team. We've got a tradition of bringing in incredible athletes, and I'm very proud of the fact they won. This is one of those years we shouldn't have won, and so I credit uh, Bill Palladino, who's a wonderful coach, and uh, an electric group of freshmen that, uh, uh, coupled with our senior leadership, uh, uh, won it again. So I'm very proud of what happened back in Chapel Hill. Regretfully, Dorrance was not in attendance when his Tar Heels took the national title. He was two continents away in Guangzhou, China, as head coach of the women's U.S. national team. The occasion? The inaugural Women's World Championship. After two weeks of intense competition, the U.S. skillfully advanced to the championship game to meet Norway. Dorrance and his team rose to the occasion. Forward Michelle aker Stahl scored both goals to lead the U.S. to a 2-1 victory. Not surprisingly, many of the U.S. players attended the University of North Carolina, and even at the national team level, friendly rivalry can surface quickly. What was funny in China as well is we had one of our alumni there uh, with uh, obviously a large UNC contingent of parents, and after one victory, they all started screaming, uh, uh, go Tar Heels, and so of course all the UNC players on the field following the victory were screaming and hollering, and all the non-UNC uh, players were booing and hissing, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it's a, it's a healthy thing, and uh, uh, I don't think uh, there's any rancor between the two groups at all. The women's victory could be a positive sign for soccer in America. All of the players are products of the college game and as such are well prepared for playing at the international level. The men's national team coach Bora Milutinovic has a more challenging task as professional playing experience is crucial for success on the world scene. We think the United States is an up-and-coming soccer power, uh, not just on the women's side, but the men's side. Uh, we're excited to be involved in uh, uh, a tremendous period uh, in American soccer, hosting the World Cup, but also seeing all of our teams uh, becoming more and more successful. And so uh, we feel a, a great part of this growth, and uh, we're excited. We're excited what happened.
<laughs> we'll return to Tampa right after this word from your local station. You think you know all about Colin Powell? You don't, until you've seen him with Ed Bradley. If you liked him before, you'll love him tonight on 60 Minutes. For years, the L.A. Canine Academy has always held a record for turning out the finest police dogs. But this Friday, the record is about to end. Would you get up, please? Get up yourself. Tequila! Come back! I'm busy, man! What did I do to deserve this? Don't ask. Tequila and Bonetti, premiering Friday. This is CBS. Doctors help people every day, but if you or your child is suffering because of a doctor or hospital's mistake, call the medical malpractice team of Wapner Newman. I'm Bob Newman, and our firm handles some of the toughest cases in the Delaware Valley. We have our own medical researchers, investigators, and a team of 16 experienced lawyers. Even a courtesy van to pick up our clients. We're the law firm for serious injuries. If you've been a victim of medical malpractice, call Wapner Newman today at 569-0900. The importance of a news story is how it focuses on you. Mike, how long should it be before power is restored? At Channel 10, you get information that impacts you and your family. Down power lines are still a problem, so please... You get a news team that's working on your behalf. Here's how you can check on the quality of media. You get a news team that cares about your community. If there is a strike tomorrow, here's what you should do. See why more and more people are switching to the news team that cares. At Channel 10, our focus is on you. Silicone breast implants, how dangerous are they on the next morning? Welcome back to the University of South Florida at Tampa and the Men's Division I Soccer Championship. Mike Joy with Seamus Mallon, and we saw a scoreless yet very interesting half of soccer. Well, there was a lot of interest there. I think the, the new fan of the game might have been a bit disappointed there were no goals, but to the purest, it really was like two KG savvy fighters trying to feel each other out, and pretty much as we expected, Santa Clara with that pressing defense, frustrating Virginia, forcing them to try to adapt their game a little bit. Virginia getting a little bit of success, but not as much as they had expected to. Though we were scoreless, Santa Clara had one golden opportunity late in the first half. Well, yes, indeed, they did. Uh, they didn't have as much uh, pos possession of the game uh, as we would have liked, but look at how Rast gets forward at that end. Does a good job running to the far corner, as he had done several times, gets a quality cross in, a quick shot by Aria, comes back out, and here's a great chance for Griffin. He runs onto it, but loses his footing and cannot pivot and whack it in with his left foot, and it's uh, just cleared away. Out of a 45-minute half, the ball was actually in play for 30 minutes and 30 seconds, otherwise it was out of bounds, and of that period, Period. Santa Clara had it only for four minutes uh, in the attacking uh, half of their opponents, whereas Virginia had it for 10 minutes and 15 seconds. Now, the, that might surprise people because Santa Clara looked as though they were going to score. They didn't have that much possession, though, because they rely on frustrating the opponent in their half. Well, we'll see how they fare in the second half of this game, and we'll return with that kickoff right after this. I've had my share of sore throats. I just went to the dock with a doozy. Nobody suggested for fastest relief? Psst, psst. Chloroseptic. Doc was right. I could actually feel the pain go away in seconds. More doctors recommend chloroseptic spray for fastest relief because chloroseptic's powerful medicine penetrates nerve endings on contact. I can't prevent a sore throat from ever coming back. But when it does, I don't have to suffer. For fastest relief, doctors say psst, psst. chloroseptic spray. It's football time. Your ball, Jim Kelly. My turn to hurt. I did it. You can do it. I can deal with pain, Jimmy. My doc says ibuprofen for body pain. The medicine in Nuprin. My trainer, same thing. So Nuprin. Nuprin. Nuprin with Nuprin. Strong stuff. Just takes one. Nuprin. Football's not so rough. At least we wear long pants. For back, joint, or muscle pain. Nuprin. Nuprin. With Nuprin. The body pain medicine. I use a shampoo for dandruff, but my scalp still itches like crazy. You need new Scalpacin, the revolutionary scalp medicine for deep scalp itch, not ordinary dandruff. Scalpacin is not a shampoo. It's a clear liquid you don't wash away like shampoo. Apply Scalpacin anytime for deep scalp itch relief with medicine chosen by dermatologists over all these dandruff shampoo formulas. Scalpacin penetrates to relieve the itch and help prevent flaking. The itch is gone. New Scalpacin, the scalp medicine for deep scalp itch. 
Last weekend, both rocked over their playoff foes. Now these two titans clash in the fight for NFC supremacy. Lions, Redskins, the NFC Championship today. On your way back to Tampa, I'm Andrea Joyce at Poly Pavilion. Just a reminder, coming up after the soccer final, you'll see another NCAA championship decided. It's women's volleyball featuring defending champion UCLA against the 49ers of Long Beach State. That's coming up shortly. Now let's send you back to Mike and Seamus. Thanks, Andrea, and welcome back to Tampa where Santa Clara and Virginia are scoreless after half of this college soccer championship. Well, I look at the halftime stats, and I think the most relevant one is the foul category, 9-5 to five by Santa Clara. That indicates that they are playing their aggressive style, and they're really going to have to keep that up if they're going to have success in this match. So the second half is underway. Virginia in white, now moving from the left side of your screen to your right. Santa Clara in red. And already, just seconds into this second half, and Santa Clara is pressing hard. Yes, they are. They're going to keep up this style of play. The question is, do they have the stamina to do that uh, for the rest of the game? It's a very taxing style. But it's brought them to this championship. Here is Reyna. Bringing the ball ahead for Scott Champ, the senior. And Champ's taken off the ball. Long, loose ball. Chasing forward is Imler. Imler has it, and he gets ridden down by Stiles. Craig Stiles. Well, we talked about aggressiveness, but that's not quite what we had in mind, I think. But good job by Imler here. He shields the ball, dodges a little bit around, uh, confusing uh, Stiles as to which side he's going to play it, and uh, Stiles just bowls him over as a result. Stiles listed he wants to either go to law school or be a CBS broadcaster. Gee, I can recommend a lot of law schools for him. <laughs> <laughs> Reyna's long pass headed for A.J. Wood, but Rueda is up with it. Well, Reyna will try some of those long passes. He's really quite accurate and uh, has a very good reading of the game. He knows when to hit a short pass and when to hit a long pass, and that could be a good attacking weapon for Virginia. Well, here's a chance for Santa Clara. Cruz on the ball. Oh. And gives it away. Good. Flick by Reyna, getting again a pass that beats two players. Champ sends it across for Bates, and Bates controlling. And now Santa Clara back on the ball. Long pass ahead for Cruz. Santa Clara comes in to set up, but it's booted away to Hugh either. That's a bad mistake by Cruz. There you see Cruz on the ball here. Now that's a good ball in, in through. Again, beats a couple of defenders. Transfer area. Oh! Nearly hit it in by Stiles. A great effort and oh, yeah. a good eye and great hands by Causey. I didn't think Stiles could possibly get to that nope. ball, but he made a great diving effort. That would have been a spectacular game winner. Aria does a nice turn, gets the ball with his left foot. He swerves across. Look at his dive. He's got to get to it by diving. It's the only way he can, but the keeper does very well, tracking across the goal. Doesn't commit himself until the last second. Vegas. Here's Clint P.A. Cross. Well, that's Wood a, yeah. just missed a classic, hitting that ball. Classic piece of the uh, UVA attacking where they finally got some sec success down the side, which they've been hoping for. And you'll see it here. It's a good little give and go. And the return ball through to PA, and he comes onto it nicely and hits it first time. And uh, it's well taken by the goalkeeper, who comes right out and, and takes it away from the uh, opponents. But here's a look at that ball. It goes through three players. It's an excellent through pass. A good ball. He tries to swerve it away, but the keeper positioned very well initially. Uh, doesn't have to move very much and predicts the cross. In the route for Reyna. Reyna beating Styles. Now looking to the right side. Bates has a lot of help up in front. Hugh Weiler. 
That ball just saved away by Schick. And it looks like he may have stretched something out on that. Uh, it was a great play, again, because the ball is played in very quickly to the far side over the whole defense, and the last player from Virginia lets it go. And that was, uh, oh, it looked like a handball, actually, there by Hugh Weiler in the trap, but it uh, wasn't given. Well, a very good cross, as I said, sweeping way to the far side of the goal, puts the pressure on the defense, but Hugh Weiler can't convert it, and gives some credit here to Schick. Grant Schick, who does very well to retreat and knock that ball away. Rueda sends the ball to midfield. And it comes all the way back toward Causey. The Virginia keeper looks and just rolls it over to PA. Clint PA, freshman from Columbia, Maryland. And I think uh, many people felt the best high school defender in the country and a terrific catch uh, for University of Virginia as they build for the future, never mind just this championship year. And PA will come all the way across for Scott Champ. Virginia switching sides of the field once again. Richie Williams brings the ball up for Brad Agus. Agus looking ahead. Here comes Bates, and he's tackled off the ball by Eric Hyatt. And a very effective and courageous tackle by Eric Hyatt because if he committed a foul in that area, it would have been a penalty kick. Well, Brian Bates was pointing toward the corner, but it will be a goal kick for Santa Clara. Seamus, let's have another look at it. Here's a little pushed through behind the defense, hoping to get somebody in the back. They do, in fact, get Bates in the back door as he comes around, and he's tackled well, and then the ball just dribbles off his ankle and goes out, as we see the goalkeeper just making sure there. But once again, that whole attack had success because when they were frustrated, as you pointed out on the far side, when they were pinched in on the left side, they turned around and quickly swung it to the right side, Virginia did, and then got some penetration down the right side. PA moves the ball ahead to Crawley. Crawley passing ahead, and Virginia is whistled offside. Well, here's a classic example of offside in soccer. Remember, when you are a receiver in soccer, you must always have two players between you and the goal when the ball is being played to you. Now, look at Hugh Weiler touch the ball back here. He's got a man marking him, but he's going to go behind that man as he lays the ball back to Crawley. Now, we'll take a look at his run. Here's Crawley on the ball, and now he pushes the ball through. But you can see Williams there, and on the far side is Hugh Weiler both behind the defenders. Rain a nice bit of ball handling there. Champ to the right side for Agus. Had nobody to pass to. Now, Syracusa looking for Agus behind him. Going to have to go in alone. And goes way to the left side for Hugh Weiler. And the give and go goes away. But Reyna controls. The first ever parade two-time player of the year in high school sends a nice cross. Richie Williams heads it. It goes up in the air to Rueda. Mitch Murray, Santa Clara head coach for the first year, replacing Steve Sampson. Well, Steve is with the World Cup committee, but he hasn't forgotten his old players and his coaching partner. He sent this nice cable to them last night. Sampson was head coach two years ago when these two schools emerged as co-champions. Santa Clara with eight men across midfield. Ooh, Styles. Almost got a head on that one. Yep. Took a tumble for it. Yeah, he's a courageous player coming in for that uh, for that uh, that attempt because that was a 50-50 ball against a charging goalkeeper who has all the advantages and he was going to be punching it away. Here you'll see the cross come in. It swerves across everybody. Well, he makes a good courageous run from behind, but uh, the keeper comes out, does an excellent job once again. Not flinching, the keeper did not flinch seeing this player come in, punched it away, and still managed to dodge him. So again, uh, good marks there to Causey, who has shown some excellent goalkeeping technique in this match. Coming right back, Matt Rast. Has Cochran in the middle, looking. Will he take the shot? No, gets ridden off it. Oh, right through Cochran's legs. Slide tackle attempt by Kelly. And it's headed up and over. Wow, what a flurry of chances there for Santa Clara. They will not want to see the highlight tape of that one for a while because they had such good chances. 
And here it all starts out here with Rast. Ever the danger man. She tries to squeeze it in. Now Cochran, when he gets this ball, will flick it. See, he just flicks it back to the other player who he thinks is there. But the other player has abandoned him. <laughs> and he's got to wait for Ari. Cochran gets it back again, loses it. The shot by Ari. The keeper swipes it away with his legs. And then Rast with a chance to win the national championship knocks it over the top. And Virginia head coach Bruce Arena needs to get his team back on offense. And here come the Cavaliers. Lyle Yorks, the senior from Storrs, Connecticut, up for Wood, and Grant Schick goes right up and over A.J. Wood. He sure does. Not much question about that. Uh, referee unhesitating in giving a free kick for this uh, challenge from behind by Schick. As we take another look at it, you'll see that uh, A.J. Wood has no chance to get up for this at all because Schick comes way over the top and just bowls him over. He used Wood like a stepladder. Now, once again, this can be a game-winning situation for Virginia. They have the talented Reina, uh, Reina who can uh, whip the ball around the wall. He can really swerve it, and uh, we'll see what he does. He doesn't take it. Ooh. Taken Crawley. by Crawley. Yeah. What a great uh, idea by Virginia. Let make it look as though Reina was going to take it, or everybody expecting it, including us, and Crawley does a terrific job, touches it just over the wall and also just over the crossbar. But uh, had the goalkeeper to wait at full stretch to be sure that one wasn't going to tuck in. Clara playing against themselves there, and here comes Wood. It's ridden down. Oh, this may be a yellow card here. He may give a warning to Cam Rast here. He may give him a yellow card. Let's see. Now, that's the Virginia player. Now, there's the referee with the yellow card. The reason for that is because referee's judgment, the Virginia player had a breakaway opportunity to go in on goal and he was taken down and it's not just an ordinary foul but a yellow card foul and, uh, and Cam Rask gets the foul. You see he's, he has a breakaway opportunity here and Rask just uh, takes him down. Rask may have felt he played the ball away from between his legs but he definitely had physical contact from the back and uh, he now has a warning, one more yellow card and he would be ejected from the game. Time running out in regulation. Last chance. It's a goal. Is it a goal? Is it in time? Well, we've got a controversy here. Do we have a national champion or do we have overtime? Lyle Yorks, who's passed at Richie Williams' header, set up the Scott Champ goal. But Seamus, when does time officially expire? Well, ordinarily, the referee is the one who keeps the, the watch, the official watch. But in the tournament here, the uh, stadium clock is official. And the question is, did the ball cross the line before or after time expired? And as you pointed out, it has to be all the way over the line to be in the goal. That's right. The entire ball must be over the entire line. Now, from this angle, we should be able to see both the clock and the header on goal. There, the ball has not even reached the player yet. And look up at the clock. There's no time left. So this goal, if the clock is official, should not count. And it's really a shame because this goal was a thing of beauty. A great header by Williams, terrific positioning by Champ, and a firm header past the goalie. A real championship winning goal. But uh, it's probably not going to count. Another look from the goalie's perspective. No chance really from that close in. But remember, referee Larry Donovan and his officials must make their decision without benefit of the televised replays. Use of them is not allowed in soccer. The horn is already gone. Let's let him, let's let him make a decision. Let's let him play. Let's let hey, him let's play. decide let's let it on the field, decide. huh? Let the players decide a national championship, not the referees. Well, now the NCAA Assistant Director of Championships, Marie Tewitt, and the Men's Soccer Committee are in on the discussion, but ultimately this is Larry Donovan's decision. Listen and see if you can hear a whistle or the field horn. Well, Seamus, I think the horn beat the ball to the net. I think it did too, and of course it's a little easier for us with replay. The referee has to make a decision on the spur of the moment. It's no goal. We will go to overtime.
That's nothing new for the Cavaliers. In six of their last 11 tournament matches, they have gone to overtime. That's right, including three out of four this year. And Mitch Murray's Santa Clara squad regrouping. Let's have another look at Scott Champ's effort that by tenths of a second missed deciding the national championship. Well, it wasn't exactly a spur of the moment decision by referee Donovan, but uh, it was the right decision. You see the ball come in here, hasn't even reached the player yet, and look up at the clock. It has run out, there's no time left, so when Champ hits it into the net, it clearly should not be a goal. A good decision. Red, I'm going to let it hit the ground. This is heads, this is tails. Four, 12, you're calling. I'm getting chased off the field. Richard, Richard. Tails it is. So for the third right year in a row, this men's so Division I college right, soccer championship on, will go to overtime. And our CBS coverage of the title round of the NCAA Division I soccer championship will continue after these messages. Today, Tech Tread Shoe Corporation announced a major retail expansion in 25 U.S. cities. When I see a company that looks like a good investment, I check it out myself. We make it easier to follow your own lead. At Charles Schwab, I can get quotes, financial news, and when I make a trade, commission savings. Always there to give you just the help you need. Help yourself at Schwab today. If you have fine or thinning hair, a heavy hairspray can plaster it down so it looks like you have even less. But Consor Special Light Spray doesn't weigh hair down, so your hair looks fuller as it holds all day. Consor, the fine mist for fine hair. We've added the leading cough suppressant to the proven cold relief of Alka-Seltzer Plus to relieve your cold and cough at the same time. New Alka-Seltzer Plus cold and cough medicine in the purple box. Two kinds of relief from only one medicine. When people gather for the Olympic Winter Games, the simple pleasure of Coca-Cola products is always welcome. And now it could win you a million dollars. Inside specially marked packages of Sprite, Coca-Cola Classic, and Diet Coke with 100% NutraSweet, you'll find a medals and millions game piece. To win, match the complete number any night on CBS coverage of the Olympic Games. 16 nights and 16 one million dollar prizes. Let the games begin. Everyone likes to celebrate when their team wins, and no one is happy if they're lost. Using drugs won't make the good feelings any better, or the disappointments disappear. But in the end, only you can make that decision. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. to Tampa, Florida, where after an hour and a half of scoreless soccer, Santa Clara and Virginia remain knotted up in this battle for the national championship. And Mike, in college, overtime consists of two 15-minute halves, two 15-minute sudden deaths, and a shootout if necessary. In the first overtime period, Santa Clara had two great opportunities. Watch seven Peter Cochran and nine Trevor Kelly. And a bad, soft back pass by Brian Bates uh, sends Cochran in and he gives a kick in the face to Causey. Later, this high cross to Chris Stiles. Chris does a great job beating the offside trap, getting the ball down nicely, but then shanks his shot way left. In the second overtime, it was Virginia's turn to go on the attack. Well, Richie Williams had a very strong game throughout in midfield, made a very good run down the left here. I was hoping to get a cross in, maybe for Crawley or A.J. Wood. Instead, Rue to the goalkeeper, dominant in the air, picks that one off easily. Finally, this chance for Santa Clara's Brandon Schmidt. Well, a very fine shot by Brandon Schmidt, an equally fine save by Causey, who is doing just as good a job at his end as Rueda was at the other. So on to sudden death for Virginia, the third time in this tournament. And once again, Reyna looking for that long pass opportunity. Did a very good job getting this ball over to Crawley. He trapped it nicely and looks for a shot to the near post. He got the shot off, but once again, Rueda was magnificent. Santa Clara's best chance came on this cross from their leading scorer, Matt Aria. And just like Rueda, Jeff Causey was able to pick that one out of the air without difficulty. 
On to the second sudden death overtime. Well, Claudio Reyna decided to shoot himself from long distance since the forwards weren't scoring, and Rueda just tipped that one over. Santa Clara had one chance, but not a strong one from Craig Hampton. Not a very strong one. Another high ball into the area, kind of the last desperation effort, and easy for Causey. That ended overtime, and we move to a winner-take-all shootout. Here's how we called it. Well, the shootout was introduced last year, and it means that each team will send its best five shooters to take a series of alternating penalty kicks. Hugh Weiler, Crawley, Imler, Champ, and Bates will go for the Cavaliers. And they have a new keeper. That's right, they're bringing on Tom Hensky, who's a penalty specialist for Virginia. The Santa Clara Broncos shootout order led by the Rass twins. Santa Clara will go first against Tom Hensky. Cameron Rast fires and Hensky deflects it. Rast is rejected. Boy, that's a big shock for Santa Clara and some joy for that man, Bruce Arena and Hensky. <laughs> Looks like he should be at Hialeah, not Tampa. <laughs> the freshman from East Northport, New York. For Virginia, art school major Michael Hewiler tees it up. And a change in goal for Santa Clara. Chris Bauer has come in. Here comes Hewiler. Fires, and he's in. One nothing, Virginia. That's a perfectly taken penalty kick by Hugh Weiler. Low and into the corner. Really no chance for Bauer to get over there. It's just almost physically impossible to reach it when it's driven that hard and low. Now Hensky returns to goal carrying this lucky glove. It's a kid's soccer goalie glove that his dad found and brought with him on this trip. As a good luck charm. Matt Rast will tee it up. Off the crossbar. Hensky was looking low and Rast had him beat but misfired. What a shock. Both Rast brothers missing. You know, the tactic, uh, I think, for the shooters is to try to get in the corners. But keep it low and not go high because that sort of thing can happen. The goalkeepers generally feel that they've got to take a gamble and uh, go for one side. Virginia's leading scorer, Ben Crawley. Well, that goalkeeper did guess, and guessed left, which surprised me, because from the way that Crowley ran onto the ball, it looked to me like he had only one choice, and that was to push it to the keeper's right. It's very difficult to go the other way from that run, but uh, oddly enough, Bauer guessed left and guessed wrong. Patrick Griffin wants to be a stockbroker. He'll go chapter 11 if he misses this one. Santa Clara needs a goal. Good shot to the upper corner. Oh, a bit of a gamble there. That's what Matt Rass tried, and he hit the crossbar, but no mistake by Griffin. Still, Hensky can be happy carrying a two-to-one lead. And for Virginia, junior Eric Emler will face Chris Bauer. Well, the pressure is usually on the shooter, but here the keeper is facing a lot of pressure because he's two-one behind. He wants to do everything possible to prevent it from going to three-one. If Imler hits this, it puts Santa Clara in a must situation for their next two shooters. He'll get a long run at the ball. He's good. Boy, this is impressive uh, penalty shooting by Virginia. That ball was driven beautifully into the corner. Nice and hard, sharp. No chance, really, for the keeper. And that time, Chris Bauer guessed right, but couldn't get to the ball. Chris Bauer's got to get his six foot three frame down to that corner for that shot. And it's just hit too hard and too accurately. Can't possibly do it. The pressure is on Santa Clara's Bruce Broughton. He must hit this goal to keep Santa Clara alive. Tom Hensky shakes that lucky glove and hopes that by deflecting Broughton, it will win him a national championship. Hensky makes the save. Virginia is the national champion. Well, Broughton doesn't hit this penalty kick very well, and Hensky moves a little bit early, which he's not supposed to do. He gets away with it. He guessed left. It was the right guess. And he comes up with the clutch play of the game. And for the first time in their school's history, the Virginia Cavaliers are in sole possession of the NCAA Soccer Championship. We'll return to speak with the winners after this.
Good game, good friends. And now that I use fix it and I can tell the ref what I really think. Fix it and, and forget it. Are you nuts? Before I switched to fix it, and Jones Peanut Crunchies only looked delicious. Fix it and, and forget it. Mmm. Fix it and is the strongest holding denture adhesive you can get. It even stands up to the hottest liquids. With my old adhesive, I'd never make a presentation and drink hot coffee at the same time. For the strongest hold you can get, fix it and, and forget it. Joe Delia wants to be the best at what he does. In this year of the Olympic Games, we applaud that spirit. Joe is postmaster of Squenton, Alaska. And no matter what the weather, he never fails to meet the mail plane. The 750,000 workers of the Postal Service are proud to sponsor the 1992 Olympic Games and share with you the quest to be the best. We deliver for you. If I want to keep playing baseball, I'm going to have to keep working. There's no off-season anymore. Every day it's just me and a pile of iron. Or a bike I ride forever. And when I get sore, I take Advil. It's strong, it works, and I know it helps. And Advil's gentler on my stomach than aspirin. To last as long as I have, you got to stick with what works. That's why I use Advil. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. All-Pro, MVP, Super Bowl champion, who cares? The one honor these guys all crave is a spot on the 8th Annual All-Madden Team next Sunday. <laughs> next three years, lucky gloves. Yeah. Hey, you know Brad? Brad, oh, meet, oh, meet the United States of America. He's my good friend. No He's my co. good friend. No co. <laughs> No co, meaning no co-champions this time around. As Tom Hensky's save right here iced the championship for Virginia. Seamus Mallins with the winners. Well, I'm here with Tom Hensky, the hero of the shootout, along with Bruce Arena. But let's go to Tom first. Tom, I've heard of being a role player, but this is a little ridiculous. You sit around all afternoon for two and a half hours, then you come out and do a little bit of work. But uh, what spectacular work you did. Thank you. Thank you. Bruce was saving me. Saving my energy. <laughs> What, what is your theory, though, on these penalties? I mean, you have any particular thing you look for in a clutch situation like that? No, nah, it's just kind of just kind of instinct, just kind of trying to figure out what's going on. And sometimes they'll show a little of the body, but a lot of it's, it's really all luck. You know, pretty much anyone could do it. You pick a side, it's the right side. You know, it could have been anyone here today. Well, maybe a bit more. <laughs> a bit more than luck, I think, Bruce, it would be your view. You spent a long, grueling afternoon here, and it looked like you had it all won after 90 minutes. Tell us about that. Oh, well, uh, Obviously, we thought it was a goal at the end of the game, but uh, the officials made the decision it was not, and fair enough, and I'm just happy that we were able to endure and win this thing outright, and uh, this team deserves to be national champions. They're the best team in college soccer. Yeah. 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 That says it all. Congratulations to Bruce Arena and the University of Virginia national champions. Next on CBS Sports, another title match. UCLA meets Long Beach State for the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship. For Seamus Mallon, I'm Mike Joy. Two years ago, they tied for the title. Today, Virginia's Cavaliers are the undisputed champions. CBS Sports presentation of the NCAA Championships is sponsored by Fixident. For the strongest holding cream you can get, Fixident and forget it. The U.S. Postal Service, official sponsor of the 1992 Olympic Games.